What's up everyone, welcome back. Patrick here. In this video, what we got to do is find the domain of these five functions over here. So notice the first two functions are very similar. And then notice the last three are pretty similar, but with certain differences, which is going to affect the domain, what we're looking for. Now, before getting into this, I want to do a quick review. Whenever you have the even root of some kind of expression, as long as it's not in a denominator or anything like that, whenever you have the eventh root of an expression, so for example, the fourth root of x plus 5, or maybe the sixth root of x plus 5, any expression here, and then this is even, or the square root of x plus 5, that would happen if there's like a 2 there. Whenever you have something like this, the eventh root of an expression, you just have to make sure that that expression is greater than or equal to zero. Because you can't take the eventh root of a negative number. You can't take the fourth root of negative five. You can't take the square root of negative five, right? It always has to be either zero or a positive number. So if you have the eventh root of an expression, you just got to make sure it's greater than or equal to zero. However, if you have an, the odd root of an expression, then that expression can be anything. It could be negative, it could be zero, it could be positive, because you could take the odd root of a negative number. So good example, third root of negative eight, that's equal to negative two. And then the third root of positive eight is also is, uh, sorry, it's equal to positive two, right? So you could take, and then the third root of zero is just zero. So you could take an odd root of a negative, positive, or zero, but an even root you could only take of a positive number or zero. So just want to mention that before getting into these because we're going to be using that. So notice for the first function, we got the square root of five minus three X plus the square root of seven plus two X. So notice that these are even roots because there's like a two here and a two here. So what we got to make sure is that five minus three X is greater than or equal to zero, right? The expression under that square root. And then the seven plus two X is greater than or equal to zero as well. And so isolating for the x, we'll have 5 has to be greater than or equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3, which means x has to be less than or equal to 5 over 3. And then over here, let's bring the 7 over. Comes negative 7. Divide both sides by 2. Means x has to be greater than or equal to negative 7 over 2. So combining these, x has to be greater than or equal to negative seven over two, which is negative 3.5, but less than or equal to five over three. So if we show this on a number line, if this is zero, let's say this is negative seven over two, let's say this is five over three, right? The domain would be between those two values, inclusive of those values, because we can take the square root of zero. Right, so notice if we plug in five over three here, it's gonna be zero. If we plug in negative seven over two here for the x, it's gonna be zero as well. So that would be the domain in this case. It has to be between these two numbers. And so writing it out nicer, what we would say is the domain would be x e r, and x has to be greater than or equal to negative seven over two, but less than or equal to five over three. Like that. Okay, and if we write it in a different notation, we could say x is an element from, sorry, not a square, uh, not a circle bracket, we would put a square bracket because um, it's inclusive of negative seven over two and five over three, like that. If it wasn't inclusive of them, then we would put a circle bracket. So if this was maybe like a denominator, this was like one over the square root of seven plus two X, then it can't equal negative seven over two because it would make the denominator equal to zero. So then this would be a circle bracket. But because it wasn't in a denominator, it can be zero 
So that would be a square bracket like that. Okay, so what about the second function? Notice the second function is pretty much exactly the same, except instead of a square root, we have a third root over here. So from this, from the example we just did, with that square root of five minus three x, we definitely know that x has to be less than or equal to five over three. But what about this now? Instead of a square root, we have a third root. Well, notice that if we have a third root, there's no restriction on this now. Because you could take an odd root of a negative number, you could take an odd root of zero, you could take an odd root of a positive number. So there's no restriction on this anymore. X doesn't have to be greater than or equal to negative seven over two. X can be anything here. So the domain for just this function by itself is just XER. And so the only restriction we have on this entire function is that right there. Okay, so all the X values have to be less than or equal to five over three. They don't have to be between negative seven over two and five over three. So this domain we would write as XER, but X has to be less than or equal to five over three. And then if we write in this notation, we would say X is an element from negative infinity, right? Because there's no lower bound now. So from negative infinity all the way to five over three, that would be a square bracket because it's inclusive of five over three. So that's the domain for this function. That's the domain for number two. And then the three remaining functions, all very similar, like I've mentioned before. So starting with number three, we got f of x equals the square root of three minus the square root of x. So notice in this function, there's two square roots to deal with. So we got the square root of x. Okay, from that, from this part, that expression, Notice that x has to be greater than or equal to zero. Because if x is less than zero, if it's negative, then the function is going to be undefined at this point. You're not going to be able to square root that negative number there. So definitely x has to be greater than or equal to zero. That's going to be part of the restriction. And also notice that this entire expression under this other square root, under the bigger square root, 3 minus root x, also has to be greater than or equal to zero, right? That entire expression has to be greater than or equal to zero because if it's gonna be less than zero, then you're not gonna be able to square root, you're not gonna take the big square root of a negative number there. So this has to be greater than or equal to zero as well. So if we isolate for x, it means three has to be greater than or equal to root x like that. And then notice that we could square this, square that to get rid of this square root. So x is now by itself, has to be less than or equal to nine. So notice that from this and from that, x has to be in between. So the domain of this, let's actually write it up here, x e r, x has to be between zero and nine, right? Because notice if it's outside of this, like if it's negative one, can't take the square root of negative one. And what if it's uh, something like 16, for example, which is greater than nine? What's gonna happen here? Well, we could take the square root of 16 here, which would be four, but then we'd have three minus four, which is negative one, and we can't square root that negative one. So that's why that upper bound is nine right there. So the domain is that, or if you want to write it in this notation, it would be between zero and nine, and you would put square brackets because it's inclusive of the zero and nine. So it can equal zero. Okay, what about number four? Notice it's the exact same function, except instead of a square root, the big square root, we have the third root. Okay, so notice still x has to be greater than or equal to zero because we have this square root of x here. So there's that restriction. But now notice that because we have the third root of all of this, this restriction is no longer existent for this function. Because remember, we could take the third root of a negative number. 
So three minus root X, that could be negative, that could be zero, that could be positive, doesn't matter. We could take the third root of any of those scenarios. So this part wouldn't be existent for this. So the only restriction on this function is X has to be greater than or equal to zero. It still can't be negative because then you can't take the square root of a negative number. But as far as this big expression here, there's no restriction on that just because there's that odd root right there. Okay, so the domain for this, let's split these up, is um, XCR, X has to be greater than or equal to zero. And if we rewrote it in this notation, it would be from zero to positive infinity, and then there's always a circle bracket attached to positive or negative infinity. Okay, so that would be the domain of this. It's less restrictive than this one because of that third root. And then finally, number five, this is the least res restrictive domain out of all three. Actually, there's no restriction on this because we have the third root here and then we have the third root here. So notice here, X can be positive, negative, or zero. because we could take the third root of that. So this restriction wouldn't exist. And then that restriction that we had in the first one where X has to be less than or equal to nine wouldn't exist on this because we still have that third root there. Okay, so, um, yeah, the domain for this one is just XCR. X can be anything. There's no restriction on it. And if we write in this notation, that would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. And let's actually add another function. I just thought of it now. We're already here, so why not? What if this was the square root of three minus the third root of X, like that? Then what would happen? Well, notice there's still no restriction on this third root of X. That could be negative, zero, or positive. However, notice that because this is now a uh, square root, you know what, let's actually put a fourth root just to switch it up a bit. So if because this is an even through, it means that that expression, three minus the third root of X has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that entire expression under there has to be greater than or equal to zero. If this was just a square root, if it was the fourth root, if it was the sixth root, eighth root, any even root. Okay, so here we would um, isolate for the X, bring that third root over, third root of X on this side. To isolate for the X, we could take it to the power of three, take this to the power of three. So we would end up having 27. X has to be less than or equal to 27. That would be the domain for this. Because notice if it's greater than 27, then we're gonna have three minus a number greater than three here, which would be negative, which would make this whole thing negative. You can't take the even root of a negative number. Okay, so for this function, uh, domain would be XCR. X has to be less than or equal to 27. Uh, and in this notation, it would be X is an element from negative infinity to 27, and that would be a square bracket right there.